sitting here chilling, watching the world go by. Man, nothing else better to do on a nice, pretty day but sit in the shade. Do what you want. <laughs> The lawsuit says that Trump has, quote, suffered vast reputational harm as a direct result of Cohen's breaches. And former President Trump has finally spoken out after being charged with 34 felony counts last week over alleged campaign finance violations. He told Tucker Carlson he's not going anywhere. Is there anything they could throw at you legally that would convince you to drop out of the race? If you get convicted in this case in New York, no, I'd never drop out. That. No, I'd never drop out. my thing. I wouldn't do it. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg requested a restraining order against Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, chair of the House Judiciary Committee. Bragg was trying to stop Jordan from subpoenaing a former deputy of Bragg to testify. But a federal judge turned down Bragg's request for the restraining order. And in a separate case, the former president is headed back to New York City for the second time for a deposition on a civil case. This one is led by New York Attorney General Letitia James. She accuses the Trump Organization of making falsified financial statements to get loans. And next, we have some analysis on former President Trump's indictment. Congressman Greg Stubbe of Florida explores the legal background of the indictment and offers his thoughts on what will be happening next. Here's a look at his conversation with NTD's Steve Lance. Then you start reading the language of the indictment, and there's so many legal questions here. It's in violation of statute of limitations. Like, I would never bring a case that was beyond the statute of limitations. They have that issue. They have a Sixth Amendment issue as it relates to not putting the underlying facts and the underlying crime. They're trying to really thread a needle through an election interference, an election FEC violation, but they're using the state court to do it under a business records misdemeanors, which they trumped up the misdemeanors to a felony. I mean, there's so many legal issues with this case, and it is 100% politically motivated which is what's frustrating. We have lost the justice system in our country where you have a Biden administration that has weaponized the justice system. And I'm very honored to serve on the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government because there needs to be an abundance of attention while we are in the majority in the House to do investigations, to do oversight, to do hearings, to put people under oath and ask those tough questions because our, our justice system has been weaponized for the left. So let me ask you, Congressman, what role can Congress... You know what's weird with Bluetooth? You don't know if somebody's talking to someone or just talking to themselves. That's, hmm. <laughs> Guy been walking back and forth up there talking. I either talk to somebody or think that he just. <laughs> <laughs> 21 is still well above the 2% target set by the Federal Reserve. Consumers can continue to feel the pain as food and rent prices remain high and continue to drive inflation. Meanwhile, President Biden touts the latest numbers, saying in a statement, while inflation is still too high, this progress means more breathing room for hardworking Americans. Biden is in Northern Ireland. On yeah, Wednesday, I'm taking him work from home. Good Friday Agreement, which brought peace to the region after 30 years of unrest. The Good Friday Agreement showed us that there is hope for repair, even in the most awful breakages. And may God bring you the peace we need. And Biden also urges leaders of Northern Ireland to seize economic opportunities with the U.S. Scores of major American corporations wanting to come here, wanting to invest. Biden on Wednesday also met with the current UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in Belfast. And next up, Biden, who often highlights his Irish heritage, will be in the Republic of Ireland through Saturday. Looks like somebody is doing better. They haven't even clogged up this sidewalk. Which is the, uh, as we all know, 
what that big old blue sign means. Now, of course, this could you use. <laughs> well, well, I don't have to use it. <laughs> blue lights going on up out. And better track equipment used to produce illicit fentanyl. What do you think about the fact sheet provided by the White House? And what stands out to you the most? Well, I reviewed it, and, and the first thing that, that stands out is the lack of accountability that the administration uh, is holding on Mexico and China. We know that the cartels are headquartered in Mexico, but, but they're present everywhere in the United States. And so um, we need to attack these cartels uh, at the source. He says the U.S. can hold Mexico accountable by placing sanctions on the country. Avila added the government should declare cartels terrorist organizations so it can freeze their assets in the U.S. and drastically ramp up security at official border crossings, since that's where most drugs come into the U.S., he says. Arian Pastar, NTD News. Nearly 70% of passenger vehicles sold in the U.S. could be electric by 2032. That's if the Biden administration's strict new emissions rules push through. The EPA's proposal would set the strictest tailpipe emissions limits ever imposed, affecting model years 2027 through 2032. The plan would represent the strongest push yet away from gas and towards battery-powered vehicles. Some lawmakers point out that it could lead to an increased dependency on the Chinese regime. Here's why. Electric vehicles and renewables are heavily dependent on critical minerals, correct? Yes. China accounts for 63% of the world's rare earth mining. Electric vehicles and renewables deepen our reliance on China, correct? Yes. In the U.S., the ability to mine for rare earth minerals is stifled by regulations. These minerals are needed for renewable energy products. Some in Congress want to loosen regulations to kickstart this industry. The GOP-led House recently passed a bill to do so. However, it's unlikely to get enough Democrats to buy in to pass the Senate, since the bill also aims to increase oil production, which top Democrats in the White House say... And Joe Biden will... A grieving community... Veto it. Vigil in Louis what I will forever do... Never be satisfied. Uh, got a little bit of a mess here. Barnett and Greenwood. Somebody's car when it got busted out recently. He suggests citizens should instead be given better capability to track members of government. And Canada-based Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms says a digital ID system has many financial surveillance and privacy concern drawbacks. But many governments around the world are starting to consider some form of digital ID. The European Union is pushing forward a digital framework to use across member countries. Yep. Authorities already say a huge Indiana industrial fire spewing toxic smoke will... An unknown programmer apparently tasked the bot to have a destructive, power-hungry, manipulative personality whose ultimate goal is to destroy humanity. This was posted on a YouTube channel called Chaos GPT. There's also a Twitter account with the same name. It's unclear if the AI system created those accounts on its own or if the accounts in the video appearing to show the programming process were created as a joke. After giving instructions, the system apparently gave a danger warning, asking, Are you sure you want to start Chaos GPT? The programmer replied yes, to which the program immediately responded, quote, I need to find the most destructive weapons available to humans. The related Twitter account, which was only created a few days ago, at one point tweeted, Human beings are among the most destructive and selfish creatures in existence. There is no doubt that we must eliminate them. At one point, Chaos GPT said the first place for large-scale legal manipulation of human beings would be via Twitter. Again, NTD can't verify if those posts were made by the AI system or a real person. Meanwhile, the federal government is asking for public input on measures to regulate artificial intelligence tools, 
A Commerce Department agency says it will spend the next 60 days examining options such as audits, risk assessments, and a potential certification process. The agency said in a statement, just as food and cars are not released into the market without proper assurance of safety, so too AI systems should provide assurance to the public, government, and businesses that they are fit for purpose. President Biden last week said tech companies must ensure their products are safe before making them public. U.S. Senators are pushing... Ah, uh, sitting up here in old old service alley. Uh, putting a well, it just screen just went out. But putting a video on YouTube. <laughs> An elementary school in Alabama has installed bulletproof safe rooms in two of their classrooms to protect students in the event of an active shooter. As you can see, these shelters are eight by eight foot rooms built with ballistic material that can stop any bullet that's been used in a school shooting to date. Dry erase material on the outside so the rooms will blend in with the classroom. The shelter can hold up to 60 elementary students, uh, 45 middle schoolers, or 30 high school students. This one of these shelters costs about $60,000 to install. Kevin Thomas is the creator of these bulletproof shelters. He doesn't want the money to come out of state or federal education budgets, but rather from federal funding that can be reallocated. He's going to Capitol Hill later this month to work with legislature, legislators on lobbying for the funding. That I see spending money on. Description rules ahead of a widely expected Ukrainian counteroffensive in the coming weeks. In Moscow, the parliament rushed through legislation on Tuesday, automatically banning registered recruits from leaving the country. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, the government simultaneously approved rules allowing recruitment centers to send summons anywhere in the country. Previously, those could only be handed to men at their registered homes. All Ukrainian men between 18 and 60 have been completely banned from leaving since the invasion started last year. And French President Emmanuel Macron was interrupted last night while he delivered a speech in the Dutch city of The Hague. So shortly after he began to outline his vision for the future of Europe, hecklers cut in. Vice French democracy. Where did we lost it? I can, I can answer this question if you, if you give me some time. He defended his retirement reform, which has become a polarizing flashpoint over the past few weeks, and said people have the right to protest, but they should not resort to violence and put their, dem their democracy at risk. Coming up, we've got a look. Years and years ago, I was working on a soundboard right there on that entrance to the porch <laughs> and a band was playing up there long time ago <laughs> <laughs> 